Since, for any given project, all of our changes will be stored inside a repository, creating that repository should be our first step. In Git, creating and working with repositories is a simple process. Let's check it out. So here we have our console environment. You can see from the helpful message that I'm using the Treehouse command line application for this video. Let's start by making sure that we have Git installed. We'll run the git command with the version flag to find out what version of git is available. Turns out git is not installed in the console application by default, but we can install it easily by following the command available here. Now that that's done, we'll check the git version again quickly. We see that we have version number 1.7.9.5 installed. The exact version number that you get is not important. All of the basic commands will work the same. It's just important to know that you have some version of Git installed on your system before we can begin. Now that we're all set, we have Git available on our system. We need to get started creating repositories. To create a repository, we'll use the git init command. In this case, we're going to create a repository called my first repository. We get a success message to let us know that the repository has been created, and sure enough, if we run ls, we'll see a new directory has been created named my first repository. Let's take a look at our repository and see what was created. Hmm, there's nothing there. Is that all a repository is? An empty directory? Well, no. Remember what I told you before. Part of the advantage of using a version control system is that it hides a lot of the messy details from you in hidden files and folders. Sure enough, if we run ls with the dash a flag to show us all files, we'll see a hidden .git folder. That .git folder is your local repository. Inside of that folder will eventually be all of the history and version control information about this project. Let's go back to our home directory. There's actually another way that we can create a Git repository. Let's assume that I've already created a project folder. And I'm going to use the touch command here to make a few dummy files. Just pretend that this is something I've been working on for a little while and I forgot to set up a Git repository first. I've done all this work, but I didn't set up a Git repository first. It's okay though, I can set one up now. Just run git init without giving it a project name. Git init will assume that, since I didn't tell it to create a new folder, I wanted a new repository for this folder. And sure enough, if we check, we'll see that wonderful little .git folder sitting in our project. It's important to note that the name of our repository is not essential. As long as that .git folder exists, it will keep track of everything that happens. So, for example, if we wanted to rename my first repository to my even cooler project, we can do that just by renaming the folder. In fact, everything important about the repository is stored inside that .git folder. You could delete everything else in your project, and if that .git folder still existed, you would have all the information you needed to restore all of your work. This goes the other way, too. If you wanted to remove the repository from your project for some reason, all you have to do is delete the .git folder and it's gone. You should definitely be sure you want to do that before you go to such extreme measures, and maybe even have a backup handy, but it's that simple. It's kind of scary how all the information about your project can be stored inside that one .git folder, but it's also powerful. The simplicity of the Git repository is one of the things that helps to make it really portable and easy to work with. The next step is learning how to commit our changes to the repository. But first, let's make sure we've got the repository basics down. 